Late Jurassic North America was an unforgiving, hellish land. The western United States, in particular, was extremely brutal. Harsh and severe dry seasons caused great destruction, and only the strongest, most powerful dinosaurs could survive and call this land their home. This harsh environment was home to many gigantic dinosaurs. Massive sauropods, the titans of the Jurassic, roamed alongside huge meat-eating theropods, famous giants like Allosaurus, Torvosaurus, and Sauropaganax, made this place known as the Land of the Giants. However, it wasn't just their large size that helped these dinosaurs survive. As the old saying goes, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. This was especially true for one fierce predator, the Ceratosaurus, known as the Hellhound of the Badlands. The Ceratosaurus, like many dinosaurs from the late Jurassic period, was found in the Morrison Formation, a large area of Jurassic rock spread across 13 U.S. states. In 1883, the Ceratosaurus was excavated from the Garden Park site. This discovery caused a lot of excitement, because the fossil was almost complete, which made it easier and faster for scientists to study it. Just a year later, the famous paleontologist Othniel Marsh officially described this new meat-eating dinosaur. He named it Ceratosaurus, which means horn lizard, referring to its distinctive horn on its nose. The Ceratosaurus remains were so complete that it became the best-known theropod found in America at that time. Despite this, Othniel Marsh still made mistakes in his early reconstruction. His drawing showed the Ceratosaurus with wrong body proportions and a posture that wasn't accurate. Over the years, as dinosaur research advanced and new fossils were discovered, paleontologists gained a much clearer picture of how this fierce dinosaur actually looked and moved. This progress helped correct the earlier errors and gave us a better understanding of Ceratosaurus's behavior and appearance. The Ceratosaurus was a medium-sized theropod, but its exact size changed depending on the species. The main species, Ceratosaurus nasicornis, usually measured about 5.69 meters (18.7 feet) long. Some members of this species grew larger, possibly up to 6 meters (20 feet). Another species, Ceratosaurus dentisulcatus, was even bigger. One specimen of this species reached about 7 meters, 23 feet, in length. This giant Ceratosaurus is estimated to have weighed around 980 kilograms, 2,100 pounds, which is as heavy as some of the biggest American bison. Some paleontologists argue that the larger Ceratosaurus specimens aren't different species at all. Instead, they believe these are just Ceratosaurus nasicornis individuals at various growth stages. This debate continues even today. Interestingly, studies of bone growth patterns, histology, help scientists better understand how these dinosaurs aged, but the full picture is still unclear. However, it was still smaller compared to some of the other giant theropods living alongside it, like Allosaurus, which could grow over 9 meters 30 feet long. To compensate, the Ceratosaurus developed a proportionally giant skull which acted as its main killing weapon. The front section was robustly built and wide in order to dish out powerful bites, while the back was more lightly built, allowing the Ceratosaurus to easily open its mouth extremely wide. This mix of power and flexibility proved useful for hunting, and it granted a versatile diet. To make up for its smaller size compared to other large theropods, the Ceratosaurus developed a proportionally giant skull that became its primary weapon. The front part of the skull was robust and wide, designed to deliver powerful bites, while the back part was lighter, allowing the Ceratosaurus to open its mouth very wide. This combination of strength and flexibility made it a skilled hunter with a versatile diet. What truly made the Ceratosaurus deadly was the deep structure of its jaws, which housed about 26 large, blade-like teeth. These teeth had very fine but strong serrations, which was unusual compared to other theropods. This design allowed the Ceratosaurus to kill by tearing into its prey, ripping off chunks of flesh, and causing heavy blood loss, making it a fearsome predator. The Ceratosaurus's deadly bite wasn't its only remarkable feature. 
Its skull also carried its famous horns. It had two small horns in front of each eye, a trait it shared with the Allosaurus. But the most striking feature was the prominent, standalone horn located just behind its nose. This nasal horn was the tallest among its horns, with a core measuring about 13 centimeters, 5.1 inches long. However, in life, this horn was covered by a keratinous sheath, so the actual size of the horn remains uncertain. Notably, the horn was wider at the base and gradually became much narrower toward the tip, giving it a distinctive shape that fascinated paleontologists. When the horn was first discovered, paleontologists believed it was Ceratosaurus's most powerful weapon, used for both hunting and defense. However, recent research suggests the horn was likely more for social display than combat. It may have played a role in interspecific fights during mating seasons, but not as a primary weapon. Still, some studies suggest the arms retained their grasping ability, possibly used to hold on to prey during a hunt. The Ceratosaurus relied heavily on its powerfully built legs, which were specially adapted for rapid running. This physical adaptation suggests that it likely stalked its prey quietly before suddenly closing the gap with great speed. Once close enough, it would swiftly dispatch the prey using its massive, powerful jaws. For many years, the common belief was that Ceratosaurus mainly preyed upon other dinosaurs, such as juvenile sauropods and the famous Stegosaurus. However, research after the turn of the century has shed new light on this idea. Evidence now suggests that Ceratosaurus may have been a semi-aquatic carnivore, capable of hunting not only land animals but also fish, early crocodiles, and turtles. This indicates that its diet was more varied and flexible than previously thought, which might have helped it survive in the challenging environments of late Jurassic North America. The idea that Ceratosaurus might have been semi-aquatic comes from where its fossils are usually found. Most Ceratosaurus remains appear near water sources like floodplains, lake edges, and swamps. This contrasts with other carnivores such as Allosaurus, whose fossils are spread out evenly between watery and land habitats. This pattern led scientists to suggest that Ceratosaurus had a diet partly based on aquatic life. Furthermore, a paleontologist observed that the Ceratosaurus had a flexible deep tail similar to that of crocodiles. This discovery strengthened the idea that Ceratosaurus was a strong swimmer and could adapt its diet seasonally, hunting fish and other water creatures when available and switching back to hunting land dinosaurs when not. Ceratosaurus was very adaptable. This helped it survive in the tough and changing environments of the late Jurassic. Ceratosaurus shared its home with many other large carnivores. To avoid fighting over food, Ceratosaurus found a different way to survive it filled a unique role in its ecosystem. This helped reduce competition and kept it alive. Paleontologists believe these dinosaurs tried to avoid fighting over food. Ceratosaurus and the long-snouted Allosaurus had similar diets, which caused more rivalry. Because of this, Ceratosaurus stayed away from places where the long-snouted Allosaurus lived. In contrast, the short-snouted Allosaurus had a different skull shape meaning it probably ate different things. That's why Ceratosaurus and short-snouted Allosaurus could live together without much competition. Even though they tried to stay clear of each other, tough conditions during dry seasons and droughts forced them into fights. When food was scarce, they sometimes resorted to cannibalism, scavenging, and intense competition to survive. One of the clearest signs of dinosaur violence comes from the Mygat Moor Quarry in Colorado. Here, paleontologists found that 30% of all dinosaur bones showed at least one bite mark from a theropod. This number is huge, especially when compared to other dig sites, where less than 4% of bones have bite marks. What's even more surprising is that after the huge sauropods, theropods themselves were often bitten. Research shows that the fiercest attackers were mainly Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, turning the site into a brutal battleground. The ecosystem back then was incredibly tough. Ceratosaurus and other predators were so stressed that they had to hunt and scavenge anything they could find. This led to many fights and clashes between them. There is even evidence that Ceratosaurus sometimes fought with other big theropods like Torvosaurus and Seraphiganax. 
During these harsh times, the fierce nature of Ceratosaurus really stood out, and only the strongest survived. But life wasn't always so harsh. There were also wet seasons when rivers, floodplains, and lakes came alive with water and life. These better times helped make the Morrison Formation the richest place in North America for finding dinosaur fossils. The environment where Ceratosaurus lived was full of different plants. There were fungi, mosses, horsetails, cycads, ginkgos, and many types of conifers. Ceratosaurus roamed among all this life from about 153 to 148 million years ago. This was a long time for any creature to survive. But despite its strength and weapons, Ceratosaurus could not last forever. Like all dinosaurs in the Morrison Formation, it eventually disappeared. Scientists are not sure exactly what caused the Ceratosaurus to vanish. However, because its home faced many tough and stressful times, many believe that a long period of harsh conditions may have helped bring about the end of this Jurassic predator. The Ceratosaurus lived in a harsh world, full of danger and fierce competition, yet it thrived with its unique strength and survival skills. If you enjoyed this journey back to the Jurassic, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss an adventure. Now it's your turn. What do you think was the Ceratosaurus's secret weapon? Or which dinosaur should we uncover next? Drop your wildest ideas and questions in the comments below. I can't wait to see what you think.